Good morning, good people. So, um, I'm reading this book right now. Um, it's called Ego is the Enemy by Ryan Holiday and basically talks about how the ego um, holds you back at every step of your journey. Um, in the phase where you're just ambitious and you want to build something, in the phase where you know you have some successes and you, you accomplish some things. And then in the face of when, you know, shit hits the fan and failure happens and things are not playing the way, are playing out the way they're supposed to play out. And it's a fascinating book and I actually think it's a book that comes at a, um, at a good stage of kind of my journey because I have a pretty low ego. Like, I don't, I don't, I don't think of myself, um, too highly but I think it's it's very easy that slowly over time we um, you know we we tell us a story that we're somehow special and I think that was slowly creeping in with me like you know like I haven't accomplished shit like in the grand scheme of things you know but um, you're surrounded by people who who mostly have accomplished less. And so your tiny accomplishments seem bigger than they actually are, you know? And um, it's easy to tell yourself that you're special and like there's a difference between realizing that, you know, you do some things different to other people and you made some choices that some other people don't do. But that just means what it is. That just means you made some choices that other people do. It doesn't mean you're fucking special. Because special is a judgment, you know? So if if you are if you are a person who you know who who is highly ambitious, kind of like I am, and you wanna, you know, you don't wanna have the the regular life and you wanna aim high and maybe you have had some, you know, accomplishments or whatever. I can highly, highly recommend this this book. Like it's so fucking good and it's so well researched actually, because he makes references references to all of these, you know, people who, where the ego was literally their downfall. Like people who like really made it and who you know who who were really in the in the spotlight and in the limelight. Um, but then that ego creeped in and that kind of destroyed it all. Um. So yeah, if you if you're that kind of person and are very ambitious, read it. Like it's so good. Um and I'll probably go back to this book again and again. Um because yeah, th this can happen at every stage along the on, along the way. So you want to remind yourself that the ego is a fucking bad thing. So I was just at the shower and I was thinking, as you do in the shower, and I was thinking about goal setting and I thought that maybe the concept of setting a goal that you think you can reach is wrong. Because to me it seems that you want to set goals in the way that you want to set a goal that you will fall short by an inch. Because that means that you you set a goal like you don't if you reach your goal then you don't know if you could have done more because as soon as you reach your goal you will stop right until you set your next next goal obviously but um if you set a goal in in a way that you will show sh you will fall short by an inch that means it's realistic enough that you will only fall short by an inch and not by a mile but it also means that it's big enough that you fall short by an inch, even if you gave it your all and you, you know, did your best. So the only thing I guess is the psychological aspect, like if it's gonna demotivate you, if you never reach your goals, then maybe that won't work out. I know that it won't demotivate me because it will keep you humble, you know? and the goal is still to reach the goal, like you can't arbitrarily try to not reach the goal even if you could, like you gotta do your best to actually reach the goal, but you will know afterwards that you set the perfect goal if you fell short just by an inch, you know? 
Okay, I was actually thinking more about this, and I think one one thing someone might say is then, well, Finn, that means that every time you will get a failure, right? Because you won't reach your goal, you will fall short, and so you will fail, and you will fail, and you will fail. And that's not good, like, no one wants to fail, and um, I disagree. I disagree on two points. I disagree that, number one, it's a failure. I don't think it's a failure, because you just gave it your all, and you just fell short only because you were that ambitious that you set the goal a little bit tiny too big, but you gave your all. Like, it's way more satisfying to, you know, set a big goal and then give it your all and fall short instead of setting a, a smaller goal that you can comfortably reach, and then you reach your goal, so you have the goal, right? Ching, ching. Um, but you didn't give it your all because it was comfortable. Like even if it's not comfortable, you know, you could you could you could reach it and so you're like you're cruising. So I think this the satisfaction of knowing you gave it your all is much bigger than the satisfaction of, you know, check marking the yeah, I reached the goal. And then the other part is that I actually think failures are good. I don't think wins are that important as people think they are. Like wins don't build character, losses do failures do. That's what's gonna, you know, separate you from, from, from the, from the rest, how you can handle failures and when it doesn't work out. So yeah, obviously big disclaimer. When I say this, this is, you know, you gotta figure out yourself first and then figure out whether this applies to you. I know it works for me, but it might not work for everyone. that fucking hey there's somewhere something here that makes a fucking beep sound do you hear that i'm not imagining him it am i where fucking are you probably something on the, the weight on it Did it stop? I think it stopped. I'm not hearing the beeping anymore. And I thought I was going crazy. <laughs> We didn't actually find it last time, it was continuing to beep, but I got the motherfucker. It was this thing. Yeah. That's him. Oh, you little bitch. Huh. <laughs> What'd you go now? Nothing, huh? Now you're not saying anything. Damn. We showed that motherfucker. So I just spent... 134 euros on supplements um, because I got into supplements like a long while back and then when I get got to New York I um, I never reordered my stuff um, and now I decided I you know I put more focus into you know getting my body all it needs and um, so I got myself some vitamin B, uh, D, some vitamin methyl B12, some collagen protein. This is something else. And then the best thing, fermented cod liver oil. Uh, that's going to be so good. I still have magnesium and vitamin C. Um, by the way, um, disclaimer, before you supplement, just figure out, you know, what you need. Because I spent like hours and hours and weeks on weeks on like figuring out like what I need and you need to do blood draws so I also got an appointment for next week to um, you know get my blood drawn and tested and all of these things so that's the only way how you know what you need and how much you need of it though there are some things like we're probably all depleted in vitamin D um, but still for the um, for the dose you need to figure it out so that's the disclaimers don't buy anything i bought just for the sake of buying it but 
I do think that everyone should like get blood drawn and tested and figure out like what are the exact supplements you need because probably you need supplements and we all do because let's face it even though I try to eat as healthy as possible our diet still doesn't get us everything we need especially with like the the soil being so depleted of all the vitamins and mineral minerals mostly um so yeah it's an investment but um I thought it was time again Ooh, I just had an interesting idea. How cool would it be if there would be something like a library for the world's best in their respective craft? So, I mean, obviously, so, you know, there are a lot of like industries and, and crafts out there, right? There's design, there's business, there is music, there is um, sports. They're all these different niches. And all of them have people that are the best at them, you know, that are experts in them, that, that are just like, haven't done anything except mastering this specific craft. And me personally, I love consuming content of these people's perspectives on things. Like, I want to hear, like, I want to hear what, how, how, you know, how... Elon Musk thinks about business, you know, I just want to, I, I just want to hear what, I, w I just want to hear how, how he thinks about things. I want to hear how um, Scooter Braun or Beyonce or Eminem thinks about music or hip hop or whatever. And obviously there is YouTube, right? And if these people ever gave an interview or a speech or a keynote or a lecture, it's on YouTube. The, but the problem is finding out who are the respective masters in these crafts. So if you if you could have a library where you could literally click, let's say on music or click on design or click on business and you will see a list of the top people in that niche, people that you've never heard of because it might be a niche that you're not you know familiar with and it might be smaller niches than just music so it's not like the Beyonce's which everyone knows and then it curates you know their best speech or lecture or keynote that they gave where you can get an insight on how they think about things I would fucking love that and um, I should create that it's not that hard you can literally curate it by hand it's just a lot of research right let me know if you like that idea and if you watch that stuff, because I can listen to anyone about anything if they are like in the top 0.0001%. Because just something different happens if someone's on that level and at that level of mastery. It's always fascinating, no matter what the fucking craft is. And if it's fucking woodwork, like I would, I would watch a video of the top 0.0001% of the number one person in woodwork just because he is a master and he spent years and years and years mastering it, you know? I just don't know who the fuck that person is. So, I should create that. Whew. We might have some real business coming in real soon because um, I got introduced to this guy through a friend who is going to be speaking at a big conference, a big real estate conference in, I think, like two weeks time in front of 800 people. And he's going to be talking about how real estate agents can optimize their, you know, social media to attract clients and make more money kind of thing. And one social media he, he didn't know and didn't understand and wasn't using was LinkedIn. So he had all of it figured out for YouTube, for Instagram, for, you know, Twitter and all of these platforms. But he didn't understand LinkedIn and that's why our mutual friend introduced us because he said, yeah, Finn understands LinkedIn and knows LinkedIn. Um, you guys should talk. And so I am right now helping him build out this part of the presentation where he's going to be talking about LinkedIn. And I'm giving him, you know, all the do's and don'ts that you got to do on LinkedIn and, and how they can op optimize their profile to get leads and through LinkedIn. Um, and I was just, you know, I, I was just for him, uh, for me, it was just to help him out because a friend introduced us and 
I knew I could help him out with it, so I wouldn't mind, like, I didn't mind hopping on a couple of calls with him and just walk him through the process. But right now the idea is that a lot of these people there will want services. And so we are right now figuring out um, product offerings that he can then offer right there on the stage and fucking sell. And, um, you know, all of this, those real estate agents who says like, yeah, this, under this makes sense. Um, I understand this. I want to push more on LinkedIn, but I want someone to help me with it. Um, and that might be a consulting call um, where I or he hops on a call with them and literally walk them through it, what they got to do. That might mean, you know, like a product offering where we revamp and that kind of plays into what I'm doing already with the LinkedIn, LinkedIn agency where we revamped their, their profile, but you know, those are specifics, but yeah, he might be selling and there might be some real business coming in real soon through that. Hi, so um, here's an update on the whole, um, the world's best idea I had. So I think I actually, three or four weeks ago in a vlog, I talked about um, the fact that your ideas are shit and unless you actually do something about it, um, they're, you know, they're not worth anything and that you should do the first step. And so I did, what I did is do the first step and, you know, just do the manual work of just starting that list in literally a Google document. And, you know, I put some in here, category design, fashion designs, virtual upload, music, film, directing, Steven Spielberg, interviewing Oprah Winfrey, entrepreneurship, Elon Musk, Mark Zuckerberg, Gary Kasparov, you know, Barack Obama, and just starting that. Oh, and I also, um, where do I find it? I created a Google form that I, that I just posted on my Instagram. Loud, you little bitch. Where people can put in, if they know someone who is the world's bad at best at a certain category and has an interview where they share, you know, their knowledge. Um, and I can hopefully crowdsource some ideas. Um, because, you know, I think that's the only way that this will work out if you crowdsource it. Because obviously, like, I don't I don't have a single clue about, like, all of these different industries, right? So, um, but other people do. Like, I don't know who's the best dancer, or at least, like, a world-class dancer. But someone who dances probably does. And they know whether there's a YouTube video of someone who did an interview, you know, kind of thing. And so, yeah, I did the first step. I, I like the idea. Yeah, I really like it. I feel like I want to build out this list just for myself, just so, you know, I, I have this archive um, and curate it because I want to watch those videos. Okay, I'm now editing this vlog while babysitting this baby, which isn't quite a baby anymore. Um, I know this vlog was kind of like all over the place with like the things I talked about. I want to just let me know what you think about these things, right? Like, just let me know about the you know, setting a goal that just falls short an inch. What do you think about it? Let me know about the idea with like the curated, curated list of the words best, if you would use it. Um, what else did I talk about? I don't know, it was a lot of things. My, my brain worked in interesting ways today. Um, but yeah, just, <laughs> just write some comment, comment on anything that you want to comment on um, in this vlog and then see you tomorrow. Peace out. Hard to wake up when there's no alarm to wake you up. Sitting, breathing, doing all the things I hate to love. But why not? Holy shit. I just wanna make a trip to the church.